Good afternoon, my name is Agata wąsowska Pavlik, and I have the pleasure to start the very last session of our sixth Heritage Forum of Central Europe, Experts Debate, Pandemic and what, What's Next. Uh, and I'm very happy that there are with me my distinguished, our distinguished guests, and if I can ask our technical staff to present everybody, including my guests sitting, yes, the, exactly, I meant, I meant that. I'm very happy that um, I can introduce uh, Alicja Knast, Irena kregar Shegota, and Robert Piaskowski. Hello, uh, very nice to to see you, especially Hello. Alicia, whom we, Hello. with whom we know each other from a long time. Hello, Irena. It's very nice that you Hello. connected with us from Rijeka. Um, our discussion is the last part of the Sixth Heritage Forum of Central Europe with the uh, broad title Heritage and Development. And uh, I would like as, as you remember, I wrote to you to ask you about um, lessons learned from pandemic and, um, and to discuss a bit the forecast and the future. But before uh, that, I would like to, to present you. Uh, Director Alicia Knast is the director of National Gallery Prague, so Alicia connects with us from, from uh, Czech Republic. Uh, she is a former director of the Silesian Museum uh, in Katowice, but she's a muse musicologist by training, but his, his whole her, her whole career was devoted to museums and to create, and she, cre she was one of the creators of the most important museums here in Poland, or at least the museum exhibitions. Um, including Friedrich uh, Chopin Museum and uh, the core exhibition in the Museum of History of Polish Jews. Um, so, uh, being musicologist, she's one of the best professional uh, in museum world, in heritage world. Um, Ms. Irena kregar shegota is a culture manager specializing in international cooperation and fundraising and is a CEO of ECOC project Rijeka 2020. Uh, she used to hold the position of senior advisor for international cooperation in culture at Rijeka City Hall. She used to work for the Rijeka City Puppet Theater. She was also um, a president of L uh, Alliance Française in Rijeka and Vice President of uh, European Culture Network Le, Le Recontrol. And last but not least, Robert Piaskowski sitting just next to me from Kraków, the plenipotentiary of the Mayor of Kraków for Culture. Uh, it's quite difficult to describe uh, uh, Robert because he's uh, um, a Renaissance man, if, if I can may uh, say like that, manager and, um, and the soul of cultural life here in, here, here in Krakow. Um, he is the, um, the founding father of the whole uh, culture policy uh, in Krakow related to festivals, especially to the um, um, Krakow Film Music Festival, and uh, um, other musical festivals that, that, that are held um, in our city. Uh, we are very, very grateful that Robert was responsible for preparing Kraków application for the title UNESCO Creative City, Kraków UNESCO Creative City of Literature, which is, uh, which was one of the, which is one of the most important achievements um, uh, I think for the city. So these are my guests. Uh, I also want to welcome all the listeners and followers and I would like to encourage you to, um, uh, to chat with us, to ask questions on the chat or comments on, uh, on, our, 
on our um, contributions. And uh, preparing this, this uh, discussion, as I said, uh, the title is Pandemic at One at and what's next? Uh, I think that a lot has already been said and written about the impact of pandemic on the cultural and heritage sector. And uh, I, I, I would like not to dive in this part of uh, the discussion. Uh, I would rather like to, to discuss with you um, what we what we have learned, if we have learned anything, what, how, we, how, do we, how did we adapt to the new situation, uh, are we able at the moment to build new strategies, how to respond to new um, challenges, challenges like post-growth, climate catastrophe, urban renewal, resilience and social integrity. Um, and uh, if I may propose the following um, scenario that we will start, I will ask first uh, Alicia, um, representing the institution, the museum, let's say one um, relatively smaller uh, organism, then, we, then I will ask Irena and in the end uh, from the per I will ask Robert from the perspective of the city. Alicia, uh, how do you, what, what kind of lessons you as a museum leader, as an institutional leader, but uh, also um, as a long time working uh, person in the cultural field, what kind of lessons do you learn from from this past, or even not past? Yes, what we sh we we also need to remember that pandemic is not over, that there is still a big unpredict unpredictability uh, in our uh, in all our undertakings at the moment, as as we are not uh, we are not sure that 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 in the in the autumn in the fall we will be able to work. Um, so what kind of experiences were, were the most, uh, uh, or, or ha what kind of imp uh, experiences uh, have this capacity building uh, strength? Yeah. Thank you for invitation. Thank you, Agatha, for a nice introduction and a few, uh, few words about my path, my professional path. Um, I would like to uh, focus on three levels. First is the, the fact that National Gallery Prague is a um, so-called Przyspiewkowa Organizacja, meaning it is, is something in between a national institute in Poland and, and it's something like um, you know, quite related to the Ministry of Culture, not completely dependent in terms of the um, investment, so very much rely on, on, on that. So therefore, we very much rely on strategic plans of the Ministry of Culture and cultural sector in Czech Republic, meaning that we uh, look forward to a uh, national recovery plan. So, so by, through really um, several discussions, which they looked like informal, but they converted into uh, two strategic documents. One is the cultural policy for Czech Republic, uh, and another one is the recovery plan. Uh, there are several areas which um, which appeared, which probably they wouldn't appear if there is not COVID-19. What I have in mind is basically the way the cultural sector in Czech Republic works. Uh, it's based on smaller enterprises and is very much based on outsourcing. Uh, for example, National Gallery has uh, 220 full-time jobs and or, or around 400 people working in outsourcing. Um, in comparison, in Muzeum Śląskim in Katowice was having uh, 180 uh, full-time jobs and uh, around 200 people working in outsourcing. So outsourcing is really a big thing in Czech Republic and uh, during the pandemic, of course, uh, it was the most fragile, the most uh, um, touched by the pandemic uh, sector. 
So the Ministry of Culture, I can, as an observer, I can say that uh, it was really uh, a result of uh, huge discussions in uh, in media and on the, in public platforms just to decide really to tackle that uh, and to do uh, it in the form of, of course, strategy uh, for the future and also the recovery plan. So that's on the main level. Just just for, for the, the, those people who are interested in it, uh, for instance, the status of the of uh, the creative uh, arts are is going to be discussed uh, soon, and uh, I think that that find it quite quite um, interesting is to, is this kind of comprehensive uh, reform introducing the status of the artists, which uh, in uh, uh, which is considered to improve the conditions. But now I would like to go, jump into the level of the national gallery, and you can see it on two levels. First, the organizational one, which means that uh, the, we had to rethink uh, the way we work and uh, be ready. And as you said, Agato, resilient in the future, meaning more flexible, more versatile, more um, kind of smart uh, in a way we put a, a set up our projects, meaning the former uh, biohierarchical um, structure and kind of um, very um, precise jo job descriptions, they have to be uh, somehow, I'm not saying loosened, but really they have to be reinterpreted again. And it is across the gallery, uh, meaning that suddenly curators have to be, you know, acting as uh, as presenters. Uh, there is a very nice series, Moje Neidilo, uh, in our platform where uh, every creator who is supposed to be, you know, knowing the collection now suddenly become, uh, you know, ta show talent in, in presenting this uh, online, which wasn't easy. But uh, as a little example, but uh, from, you know, curatorial point of view, from the uh, AV point of view, from the platforms to present our things from uh, education point of view and all this development, we had to rethink everything, really everything. But also, it did have a huge impact on the programming. Uh, recently, we had a, also discussion actually what is important, where, uh, where, what is relevant. And we are working on two things again. One is the, the topic of uh, privacy slash intimacy, which uh, in pandemic time really was uh, uh, kind of, uh, I would say, urgent and and uh, not very, not very, we were not able to really see what is going on. So I think uh, institutions like ours have to really take it on our desktop and work on it. So we are going next year to have a, a festival together with Centrange Pompidou, uh, which will be tackling this temptacimacy. And I think we wouldn't have done that if not for COVID. It is simply because of the theatralization of our life which is going through uh, digital platforms and especially a completely uh, new generation of change in terms of the expressing ourselves and, and uh, getting intimate as well and um, getting close to each other, not necessarily the physical presence, but through, uh, through media. And this is what we do now. Uh, we can say it is temporal, but actually um, the next generation uh, landed in the formative years uh, uh, generation of people being in 17, 18, 19 years old, they, that's the way they, they, they express themselves, uh, understand themselves. So we have to think of the gallery, how to um, tackle that in the future, because their creativity, their uh, artworks will be presented this way on those platforms, not necessarily in an analog way. So from a programming point of view, we have to uh, we did draw from the COVID, but uh, but also we uh, we decided just really to to be resilient in the future and to be hybrid in hybrid version all the time. And of course, it was very uh, enjoyable to see that if uh, in the past uh, presentation I was having something like uh, you know 50, 50 attendants, then suddenly our talks, our panel panel discussions uh, about, you know, important issues related to temporal exhibitions. Now, suddenly they, they, there is a 300 uh, visitors. 
um, reviewers and it really is uh, meaning that it works and uh, we can see of course comments i can talk endlessly about it but uh, the gallery also uh, before i came it has to be said it's it's not me doing that i was really um, mobilizing and saying okay what we can do really we've got so many exhibitions and now we have to close the institution so there were plenty of well, plenty of creativity and there was plenty of um, excellent initiatives there was one for instance uh, um, collaboration between national ballet and uh, national gallery which re uh, in which um, resulted with uh, uh, a spectacle on the in the space of the national national gallery about saskia and rembrandt so i think you know the the covid was really um, causing us many deaths and many um, many unhappiness but at the same time also to point those things because um we don't talk enough we don't talk enough about them i think that would be me, from me i don't want to monopolize this but i i, I actually can talk endlessly about this uh, rather positive impact on, on us. Thank you. So I understand that what you said, that that COVID somehow uh, was a catalyst for the creativity. And it's, it's obvious that uh, every uh, the situation of being surrounded by obstacles and, and uh, being trapped somehow, because during pandemic we were trapped uh, in-house, um, it, it was a catalyst for uh, creative thinking, for uh, um, uh, going outside your own box. Uh, and it would, it, it is, I think it, this kind of um, uh, experience uh, and this feeling is, is important also for, for future. Um, Irena, uh, you represent uh, mm -hmm. as a, a completely different, um, let's say, situation. ECOC, European Capital of Culture, 2020, 2020 um, in Rijeka, uh, hit you at the most unexpected uh, moment, just after the opening, I, under I remember in February, uh, you opened officially the, the festival and suddenly after Two, two weeks or three weeks, uh, everything was closed. Um, and uh, with such a big uncertain uncertainty, or, or um, um, you somehow survived this year. Uh, and for such a organization, for um, um, for a organization with um, very the diversified goals, um, organization that um, um, in fact was uh, counting on cooperation with many stakeholders. Uh, what kind of, what, what, what was the most important lessons after that, that year for um, Rijeka 2020? Well, First of all, uh, hello to everybody. I'm really happy to, to be here, to participate in this panel, to present uh, the ECA 2020 project. It's really a privilege to speak among such uh, uh, prestigious panelists. Uh, I have prepared the presentation uh, to present our project and through that to answer or tackle some of the questions that uh, uh, you have um, you have asked. So if um, uh, we can go on with the presentation, then first of all, see the short clip about Rijeka, just to uh, give us a, a bit of a flavor of what the year looked like. Yes, please.
Yeah, as you can um, um, see by the captions in the in the short film that we have uh, just seen, that there is a, a quite a significant legacy of this project, which is uh, which is really important, and it's it's another proof that uh, uh, mega events like European Capital of Culture are 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 still uh, important things. That something that uh, we should uh, we should. Uh, uh, continue to organize regardless of obstacles that are within the initiative, but also uh, obstacles like the pandemic that was in, in, in front of us. Uh, but let's just remind us uh, at the beginning that the initiative started in 1985 by Melina Mercuri, a uh, Greek minister at that time. And it was really uh, the, the, the main goal of the initiative was really to strengthen the ties uh, in Europe, uh, through members of the European Union, through uh, and to highlight also the diversity of cultures and languages in Europe. Why am I stressing this and going to the beginning? Because this is also something that we need to remind ourselves uh, that these uh, goals, these aims are important for Europe now, maybe more than ever. Uh, we all know that pandemic was really uh, a big challenge for Europe, the European Union, and it still is uh, for it as, as a huge uh, 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 organization, but also for its democracy, for for its uh, participation, for for the ties between the between the uh, between the members. Uh, there are many voices now that say that culture really should play a crucial role in the future strategies of Europe, in the future policies, and that the initiatives like European Capital of Culture should be strengthened and should be carried on in order to, uh, to, to, to fulfill those goals. Uh, why we ache a bit for European Capital of Culture is a, is a mega event. Uh, we had a very nice uh, talk by, by Professor Bianchini on the first day of this conference about the importance of mega events and how they contribute to cities, not just in cultural way, but also in economic way and in other ways. Rijeka is a rather small city, 130,000 inhabitants, third largest city in, uh, in Croatia. Um, center of, uh, of a smaller region, but we seize this opportunity to not just uh, uh, as, as a cultural event, but also as an event that would, uh, uh, that would give uh, uh, energy to certain developmental processes in the, uh, in the city. Rijeka won the title uh, with the slogan Port of Diversity and the three topics, water, work and migrations. Uh, these topics are really, they describe the, my city, they describe its story, but they're very important now, even when I look uh, after the pandemic and after everything that we've been through, they really link us with uh, the important issues in Europe now, uh, not just in Europe, but uh, important global issues. When we talk about water, we talk about uh, water as an uh, uh, endangered uh, uh, resource, valuable resource. We talk about climate changes, uh, about uh, ecological issues that are maybe the most important uh, global uh, questions that, that we are all dealing with. Uh, migrations, uh, this topic motivated us to talk not just about the migration crisis that Europe was in this facing, but also about the different migration uh, processes, the global processes that we all uh, live with. And finally, uh, when looking into work as an industrial city, we wanted to look into post-work era, uh, into non-work, work phase uh, with, uh, with artificial intelligence, with the technological and digital disruption, and especially with the place of artists uh, in this, uh, in this work, uh, new work, uh, work in environment. Uh, these three topics and the slogan, also I must say, when we chose the slogan Port of Diversity, it was always with a question mark. So not only boasting about city, a port city, a border city that has always been diverse, but also uh, asking about how we live diversity nowadays and how the culture and arts are opening uh, areas for 
for diversity discussion for hyper diversity uh, uh, issues that we that we live with um, this topics and this slogan um, were um, inspiration or motivation for our program lines uh, and for the narratives artistic and cultural narrative that we uh, that we uh, carried on uh, throughout the uh, the project in 2016, as I said, Rijeka was uh, nominated first uh, Croatian ever European Capital of uh, Culture. The beginning of the year was really spectacular with a huge uh, spectacle, opening spectacle in the port that uh, attracted more than 30,000 visitors uh, in the city. And then uh, there were many other events at the beginning of the year. We are talking about January, February. And then in March, we were really hit in the face by the pandemic and all that it brought. Um, uh, I must say that it was really a big shock for us. Uh, the, the project that we were um, supposed to implement in 2020 was prepared since 2013. So you can imagine the, the amount of resources, uh, financial energy, creativity, uh, human work, uh, a number of hours that was put into that. And then all of a sudden uh, we came to a halt. Um, after, as I said, first shock, we decided to go on, uh, and uh, that, that decision was very important for the uh, for our project. But the reasons why we carried on are also the lessons that we can uh, replicate on on other uh, on other problems in cultural sector. We carried on because, of course, uh, the title was important for the city and its citizens. We carried on because it was important for cultural scene. We, we heard a lot in this conference as well how cultural and artistic scenes uh, in Europe, but also globally, were hit and there are going to be uh, negative effects because of COVID for many years to come. Um, also, the, the, the project was very important for the participation of our citizens, for the cohesion of our uh, of our societies, of our of our communities, uh, these were all the all the reasons that we decided to to adapt, to downscale, uh, to uh, to reprogram and to adapt the project and the program to new circumstances. It was not easy. Um, of course, social distancing, borders were closed. Uh, all of a sudden, our complete uh, international dimension was jeopardized. As you said at the beginning, this project was imagined with more than 250 partners from 40 countries around the world. So all of a sudden, uh, majority of partners couldn't join us. Uh, also, we received a huge uh, financial blow, namely uh, um, the, the project was financed with, uh, with public money. And uh, as we all know, all public um, uh, budgets were, were, were hit by, uh, by, by COVID. So not only did we need to adapt uh, in, uh, in terms of program, but also the whole uh, governance of the project and the whole managerial scheme uh, needed to be uh, re uh, reconsidered and uh, rethought. Just to give you an illustration, this is a, a picture of a festival, children's festival, Tobogan, in 2019. There were 50,000 people, kids and uh, grown-ups uh, on the streets of Rijeka. A group from France uh, joined us with this giant bird. And this is the same square in 2020. So completely, instead of several thousand people, uh, we had, uh, we gathered uh, uh, several hundred visitors uh, with the very strict measures applied. I must also say that we were lucky because Croatia was not uh, in such a harsh lockdown as uh, other other countries in Europe. So we were able to implement a lot of activities in a new way, but still, uh, still with it. Uh, the COVID forced us to be creative, as we heard from other speakers as well, in the way how we use our spaces, which spaces do we use, how do we uh, reach our audience, how do we um, ensure safe uh, uh, 
uh, safe, uh, vi uh, safe visiting, safe uh, participation in, in cultural events. This, for example, is an old uh, warehouse in the port that was not initially meant for eco projects, but because it's huge, we used uh, its interior, but also outside for summer, uh, uh, summer events. Uh, as I said, the inside is huge and it enabled visitors to um, uh, to, 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 to visit uh, exhibitions and to in, in a safe way. I must say that museums proved, if they were open, they proved to be quite safe COVID spaces because uh, we were able really to, uh, to monitor entries, to uh, book slots uh, of visiting uh, online, etc and to ensure that our audience have a safe, uh, uh, a safe uh, visit. Uh, these are other examples of exhibitions. Um, we also tested very, uh, very um, intimate forms of uh, uh, visiting. So for example, this exhibition, which is called Hysterical Machines by Bill Warren, which uh, uh, examines the relationship between artificial life and humans were really meant for individual visitors and the reactions were very, uh, very interesting. Uh, we even moved the uh, concerts to sports hall uh, because uh, the, the, those were only, we have wonderful theater in Rijeka, but uh, Sports Hall uh, enabled the symphony orchestra to guarantee two meters distance between each, uh, each, uh, each player. Uh, different public spaces became spaces uh, for, for art, uh, like this rooftop, uh, of a commercial center, or even pops of huge uh, skyscrapers that Pieka is famous for, uh, this, this tall uh, high-rise buildings from the uh, 60s and the 70s uh, have wonderful terraces, and we also explore that space. So COVID uh, really forced us, as I said, to explore space, to explore our connection with the audience, uh, to, to reach audiences and to work and build audiences in different ways. All that was uh, permanent installations and permanent uh, artwork was uh, also something that we put uh, uh, accent on be because it's also a permanent legacy, like this wonderful art installation in, uh, in nature, uh, natural scenery by uh, Chilean artist of Haitian origins, Milan Radic, on the island of Bashka. These are wonderful uh, glass uh, uh, spheres. Uh, uh, this, this program line was called uh, Lungomare Art, and it was curated by, uh, uh, by um, the Czech uh, curator Mikhail Kolacek and invited internationally renowned artists uh, to Rijeka and to our region. Uh, Pavel Merkush also did an installation on the fish market in Rijeka. Uh, there was this, uh, this also another wonderful uh, um, um, art, uh, contemporary art installation by a uh, creation artist, San Vincenti. Um, other permanent uh, installations uh, uh, or pop was this, uh, were, were examples like this pop-up uh, pop playground uh, for kids. So we really played with uh, outside, with outdoors, uh, with environments that, as I said, enabled our audiences, uh, our audiences to join us. And of course, a lot of uh, new uh, arts on the facades uh, of our city uh, saw, uh, saw the light. Digital space, of course, was something when the COVID happened, uh, there was a, a temporary uh, pause or a halt in our project and for almost a month we did nothing for for what we were heavily criticized as you can imagine by the local uh, local uh, community uh, media politicians but it's very difficult when you prepare something for years for uh, eight seven years uh, it's very difficult to shift that uh, online uh, overnight 
uh, it's one thing and uh, we learn that there is one thing for sharing or just demonstrating what you've been doing so we have we for example filmed uh, our exhibitions uh, organized online tours uh, prepared our audiences in that way by uh, while waiting for the spaces to open but if you want to have real digital art, it really takes time, it takes money, it takes resources, it takes knowledge. So it's not something that you can instantly uh, instantly do. But nevertheless, we had uh, uh, several uh, wonderful concerts that were uh, that could be seen uh, that were seen only online. At that, still you can uh, you can see them if you go on our YouTube channel. Uh, I might also say that throughout the whole COVID time, we uh, continued working with our citizens. This was very important for us, but also for them to still be part of the project. Volunteers also, volunteering was just uh, one of the platforms to engage uh, our audiences, our citizens, but they also helped us uh, in providing, uh, you know, uh, registering people, providing uh, uh, doesn't um, whatever we needed, you know, masks and uh, products for, uh, for 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 the audience. Uh, I would like now to talk about. So obviously the project is Irena, huge. Irena, I, yeah, Irena, sorry. Can yeah. can we can we f stop for a moment and maybe we can of course. back to the. Um, to the rest of your presentation, because we already uh, see see a lot, and uh, we do appreciate uh, the great uh, effort that was done to to realize the the whole pro the whole project despite uh, so many obstacles. Uh, but uh, and I think this word is, uh, is already uh, was already said uh, here uh, that. Uh, um we need we all needed to be resilient of course what what the word really means res what resilience means how to be uh, uh, uh resilient is i think it's a process we are we are uh we are still um uh learning that um because uh, from simply human point of view we are we are you tend to certain stability and routine and uh, um, resilience is something um, I think completely uh, different uh, uh, experience and uh, may, may I ask now Robert um, uh, about uh, the, um, the, the, the the experiences of the uh, pol culture policy in the city hit by pandemic and the lessons that what you know now after this one year of fighting with uh, economic crisis with uh, people not always want to be resilient um, and then we could, we we got back to the legacy of uh, of this of this year and uh, if, if then i will ask you uh, irena to continue if i may suggest thank you agata i'm really happy to be here face to face with you and I wish to have all of you here in Krakow uh, especially that we have such a wonderful weather now in Krakow we are just a few yes. meters from our famous market square um, UNESCO heritage site uh, and congratulations to Rieka Irena that was uh, amazing and we all uh, feel tempted to to go to your town and to experience this fascinating festival of culture, to see how resilient is your society, your co community, your town, and how rich in culture and in, in many ways. And Alicia, we were all uh, proud of you when you've got this prestigious position in Prague. So uh, I wanted to share with you that it was in Krakow great, great, great fiesta about your a new position. And now going back to your question, Agata, of course uh, there is so many challenges we are facing all the time. The pandemic has not ended uh, and it will continue in different phases. We already have different pandemias uh, in different uh, parts of the world. 
and and this uh, sense of yucca this this uncertainty uh, this um, uh, problem of unpredictable uh, word uh, volatility and ambiguity of of our uh, cultural sector is a fact we all uh, work on different scenarios in in the same time and in Krakow it has been very challenging time because we have ecosystem of almost 500 cultural institutions municipal 200 different cultural centers the national regional private centers so such a rich ecosystem is a is a big issue how to maintain uh, professionals uh, how to secure economy of those institutions how to uh, respond to the situation that most of our museums, we have 117 museums in Krakow, they were very successful in their economy or theaters. Even 40-50% of their uh, revenues that, were, that came from ticket sale. And suddenly we, we should find additional um, uh, resources to cover all of the losses. Then how to respond to big fear, to big uh, uncertainty, to exclusion in, in di on different level of the social life, how to change the priorities, um, because priority has not been, um, let's say, marketing-oriented culture, but culture oriented into um, connections, how to build ties, how to, how to um, respond to, uh, to this uh, big, uh, biggest uh, um, a challenge uh, that most of the people they are deprived from digital tools or they are not familiar with online culture uh, and and that was also a big big um, challenge and opportuni opportunity in the same time how to provide equipment new new um, uh, new skills new uh, new um, uh, how to restructure our institutions uh, to to be more responsive to to invest more into the uh, digital culture how to be connected and i think that this test uh, we passed uh, in this exam we we passed uh, with with a great success because uh, the um, um, response of cultural institution in krakow was amazing i mean festivals for example they even tripled their regular audiences theater festival boska comedia divine comedy festival was uh, th there were f 23 co-productions uh, amid um, amid theaters in uh, throughout all over poland and they were presented to 35000 people they were they were, they were a new platform emerged and and the very first municipal vod platform we we released in very first months of pandemia in in september and uh, now having almost 500 um, audiovisual um, programs concerts plays uh, virtual uh, tours in the museums and almost 120 uh, viewers regular um, uh, subscriptions and i think it was very creative response we reimagined the role of heritage in Krakow because the heritage we quickly noticed that this is something important for our identity this is a resource which brings us back to to the heart of the town which has been regarded uh, regarded before pandemia as a zone for tourists only there was a great campaign launched in very first months of pandemia be tourist in your own city Re rediscover be uh, t discover places which has not been visited by inhabitants for decades including uh, major attractions like Wawel castle which literally opened their uh, its doors to inhabitants then the role of green spaces which has increased um, cultural events concerts in parks vistula river banks 
um, shared spaces in different districts of of the of the city the new uh, definition a new dimension of collaboration uh, pandemia has um, proved that we are all equal biggest institutions were vulnerable or even more vulnerable like uh, ngos used to be vulnerable over the years uh, Yes, because everyone lost resources, connections to the audiences. Everyone was struggling how to, how to keep their staff, their professionals uh, and programs. We discovered also that we need to go um, uh, into a different way from quantitative to qualita quality or qualitative uh, dimension of the culture from carousel of events. In Krakow, we, we used to have every month 3,000 events per month. It was a very hectic life. And suddenly we discovered that we can uh, work uh, in different manner, working on connections, uh, creating something all together. Um, because the, the, the main uh, goal is how to glue society back how to regenerate city, how to use culture in regeneration process, how to respond to this incredibly um, dangerous time for human rights in the time of race of populism, misogynia, homophobia, how to respond to all of those movements they are raising because of pandemia also, because pandemia has created new challenges for democracy as well. So all those questions we are asking ourselves all the time. Even if I think that this time was extremely creative, when um, this time was extremely successful for, for, for Krakow, we, we keep our investments into culture. Uh, new projects are emerging. Uh, uh, Center for, for Music, uh, Museum of Photography uh, opening soon. Uh, new uh, um, investments of town and theater, Wajnianowa, House of Utopia, Utopia. Uh, the Center of Empathy, working on community uh, building. So those investments shows that for this city, culture is an important um, way how we how we understand resilience city spending five percent of its budget for culture having such a dense network of cultural institution we are resilient city because those institutions those network those networks and those long-term investments has proved that every effort to invest into culture brings uh, resilience in in confrontation with such an hazard or uh, or pandemia or whatever this resilience has a very large sense thank you robert um, indeed uh, krakow is uh, is the city of of uh, uh, vivid uh, cultural life and especially now it is intensified after the lockdowns uh, but uh, I want to back to Alicia I you you gave you gave an interview I think a few weeks or a few months ago to art talk and you wrote uh, you you said in this um, interview about the blockbuster exhibitions about the the, the question was uh, about the programming, the future programming of the of National Gallery Prague, and I, in terms of, I I I I want to to a certain extent to repeat the answer you have given to this uh, in, to to this to those uh, journalists because I'm not sure if everybody is uh, acquainted with this uh, with this interview, but I see your question your answer as a. Um, a a kind of a legacy after pandemic, uh, a reorientation of the program uh, with very um, towards a local public, towards a sustainable uh, 
um, economy concerning organizing big exhibitions uh, and investing in uh, uh, active uh, participation in culture of the local residents. Alicia. Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, we have the blockbuster exhibitions in uh, our part of the world, I mean, Central Europe. It is not, uh, it's something which is saddens me uh, because uh, we are not that uh, wealthy to really have real blockbusters, sometimes, you know, third uh, range, um, not the best things uh, from given, you know, um, big figure in artwork. And uh, because we can't afford really the per uh, uh, cost of uh, insurance, for instance. So we are kind of, uh, we are very, en we are enjoying the blockbusters, which are really not blockbusters. Let's be honest that it's uh, not blockbuster. You can, you can see in, in uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art or Tate Modern. It's just, we can't afford it in our countries. We, there's not a budget for that. And let's face it, let's face it first. We all got poor. I mean, especially in Czech Republic, uh, it's a very uh, simple system. The money you earn, you can spend on programming. The rest of the money for the maintenance of the institution you are given by the, by the state. Simple, you don't earn, you can't really make uh, exhibitions. With this uh, current, uh, really decreasing in income in uh, our budget uh, because we are open since since uh, uh, April um, April May um, that's really uh, nothing to you know build on the programming in the future so what we have to do is really we have to be creative how much it will cost how much we will recycle uh, what we've got already with whom to collaborate it's, I know that the, the, the National Gallery is, uh, is a place where uh, we have to uh, do something meaningful, but I would, uh, I, would ex I would change it and say something really relevant, really uh, waited for. And uh, I, I, since I remember, I keep uh, kind of insisting upon distinguishing in our institutions between needs of the public and expectations of the public. I think uh, there are two different things and, and uh, the need now is to me is really fixing the, 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 the um, relationship we are broken between us uh, and it's very, very important social role. The gallery is a safe place to come because we have a lot of, um, uh, we have because of the volume of the, of the air so we can contain quite a lot of uh, visitors. But at the same time, we can see each other, we can start, um, you know, gaining something for ourselves, but at the same time, it's a very, a, it's very a safe social space. Uh, in the, on this particular moment, in Czech Republic, we have a rule of 15 square meter per, per, per person, one person per 15 square meter, which is not a lot, but, uh, but then the, I, I am absolutely sure that uh, visiting our galleries, for instance, uh, our um, exhibition of, of Twyana, Czech, Czech, Czech surrealists, is extremely unique experience because you enter the exhibition and, and you are on your own and you are with the artists and the, this quietness which is helping you to really understand the, the this particular artistic uh, persona and and uh, and uh, also enjoy uh, because you don't have the noise of other visitors you can enjoy the environment and actually uh, i mean I, i'm sorry to, uh, to say that but it's it's the part of the experience now you can really hear the peacocks which are now from the gardens of the Senate, and therefore, you know, this it gets kind of surrealistic uh, uh, view on its own. Uh, so I, I would say that uh, now we are discovering micro scale, which we were missing in the past. And uh, I think that what is what was said before, it's the discovering in our own communities and us as institutions working to for the community to have the place to see us. Uh, it is ongoing process. Uh, we at the gallery we are uh, now uh, working on the new strategy, and uh, and we are reorganizing the institution slightly. But uh, this is really uh, the key component of that because, and I don't even need to 
uh, you know, say that to the people and it's just the team kind of feels, we, we all feel that we have to do it. So those changes are, um, are going on in kind of invisible way. There is no survey which can capture it and no uh, research we can really present here to say what really happened. But I, I absolutely see that there is a, uh, there is, we are not going back to the state before and there is that I really myself don't accept this for the this this um, kind of saying that this new reality you not know, this reality it's different reality it's not new it's different and we have to really uh, work on that but I am myself uh, uh, very very confident that uh, we can fix a lot of things in culture mm-hmm. I mentioned before at the very beginning the the strategies in Czech Republic they would not have happened if that's not the pandemic and uh, certain um, distortions of the system are so much visible, so, so they are now dis- really heavily discussed and they wouldn't be discussed before w- without pandemic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also the institution would not be so open to change uh, if this is not a pandemic. Um, and uh, and uh, as I said, the, the team is enjoying the new formats, new way of looking at things and new way of thinking um, I, and I, I personally think that we are ready for for a September new wave of the pandemic. Uh, think- and uh, hopefully it won't what happen, but I think I'm kind of very positive here. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much for for those words, um, because it uh, they you are you were very honest and open, saying that uh, we needed to change but we haven't seen it, we didn't see it before pandemic. And pandemic was to a certain extent a game changer, a real game changer. Uh, and of co- but of course, uh, it also, uh, I, and I think we, we, uh, we observed that, that it was a, um, uh, it make more visible all the pathologies of the system we we we, we used to work in and exactly. and uh, now it, now it should be a time but i and i hope that we will be able to, uh, to 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 use it properly to change the system of course it is not only us who is who is sitting here but but uh, it should be, I think, something, this, this, le- this lesson uh, and my question uh, to you about lesson learned was about um, that. And very, I'm very happy that, we, that, that I heard that, uh, that answer. Uh, Irena, you, you, you're, you, I stopped you and I apologize again for that, but I, I wanted no. more, 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 more discussion about the legacy of the of the uh, uh, Rijeka 2020 and i know that the mo- one of the uh, important issues is that uh, your city invested in cultural infrastructure even if at the moment ecocs are not that uh, uh, as projects are not that oriented on um, mm-hmm. uh, build new buildings or or even adaptation of historic buildings but uh, in your city i think it was important those especially this sh- sugar uh, former sugar factory with uh, museum of the yeah. history of rieka museum of contemporary art children's house uh, all those uh, all those uh, library i think there's also the city library uh, if I if I yeah. am uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, so yes. so there is uh, there is a lot of um, a ta- a tangible legacy of that uh, <coughs> of that project. Um, mm-hmm. How n- how at the moment uh, this uh, legacy works? This is very very. Um, uh, uh, interesting also from cultural economics point of view when we invest and build new uh, new new institutions uh, um, but suddenly the daily routine and daily life uh, uh, come and especially with pandemic uh, <laughs> uh, with the budget cuts and and uh, lower mm-hmm. income from no or even no income from tickets sale so how how it is at the moment yeah 
first of all, I'm sorry for monopolizing the floor earlier. Uh, and thank you for interrupting me. I could really talk about this project <laughs> uh, for I, days. I uh, can imagine yes. that you can talk <laughs> about it all the time, but... <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, as you said, yeah, there is a very important legacy of the project. Uh, it's now very interesting to see how the the city and the region, especially through their policies and uh, actions, are going to ensure that that legacy is uh, used uh, in a meaningful way and that the city builds upon that in uh, in different ways, not just economically, but uh, uh, socially and in other ways. I have I have taken two examples of the legacy. One that uh, that is linked with the most tangible legacy that is a cultural infrastructure, and the other one that uh, uh, that talks about uh, participation and involving communities. Uh, so so let's start from the cultural infrastructure. You you are very right when you say that uh, in recent uh, in the last years, new ECOX did not put stress on cultural infrastructure. Rijeka, uh, in our case, we did not build anything new, but uh, we decided to give to repurpose uh, former industrial buildings in the city. So basically, some 27,000 square meters became new cultural infrastructure in the city. We are talking about the former industrial complex Benchich in the very heart of the city. It's really uh, almost uh, the, 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 the main pedestrian zone. Uh, this whole neighborhood started growing in the 18th century and the first thing they produced was sugar. The last thing before it closed in the 90s were machine parts. Uh, it's a city property and as I said, a city decided as part of European Capital of Culture to repurpose this before, uh, and to give these spaces to cultural institutions. It's not just the property that was valuable, this also the whole neighborhood, Rijeka being an industrial city, worker city, was very meaningful for the identity of the city, for its narrative. Um, so at the beginning, we, we still collected many stories about people who worked there and who, uh, who helped us uh, build content, uh, uh, artistic and cultural content uh, around, uh, around this. So the, the form of Benchich uh, is now becoming a new uh, art uh, neighborhood in Rijeka and the four existing cultural institutions uh, will find a new home. So the Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art already moved in. The City Museum uh, has its um, new permanent collection in a former so-called sugar refi refinery building. Uh, the City Library will open um, its uh, doors in next year. And finally, there's Children's House as a very unique uh, cultural center. These are some illustrations of the, of the new spaces, uh, Museum of Modern Contemporary Art, uh, where last year we held, for example, a wonderful uh, exhibition by David Malkovich, uh, one of the big names of Croatian contemporary, contemporary art. Uh, sugar Refinery, which is something completely different, uh, Baroque industrial building that is becoming a new city museum of Rijeka. Uh, this year we uh, we uh, hosted a wonderful Klimt as an exhibition there, not uh, not imported Klimt, so to say Klimt exhibition, but namely uh, Klimt uh, with his brother uh, painted ceilings in Rijeka National Theatre uh, while he was uh, working in this part of Europe. And now, um, as part of European Capital of Culture, those uh, ceiling paintings were exhibited uh, and the whole narrative around uh, that Klimt, uh, uh, young Klimt's work uh, was, uh, was uh, presented. Uh, another illustration from the sugar refinery. Uh, children's House, as I said, a very unique 
uh, new cultural center dedicated completely to the zero to 14 year old audiences, uh, really state of the art uh, with state of the art equipment, wonderful. Uh, there's nothing like that in Croatia and also regionally, this whole space is dedicated to uh, media literacy, uh, filming, uh, library, uh, creativity of the kids. Uh, our slogan for the building was not just for them, but uh, with them. And finally, see the library that will open uh, the doors in uh, 2022. Part of the project is also a former Tito's Yacht Galeb that will become a floating museum in the city of Rijeka. Uh, uh, Galeb is still in the shipyard, but it will become another very intriguing project, talking not about that part of the history, Tito, non-aligned movement, but also about life on board of a ship. Uh, and uh, the spaces on ship are also going to be used for, uh, for, commercial, uh, for commercial activities. A big challenge now for this uh, huge infrastructural project is uh, to provide content to, and to reach audiences. As uh, Alicia mentioned, it's uh, um, uh, usually uh, cities and uh, uh, budgets, uh, public budgets provide for the maintenance for, for, uh, uh, for, for the buildings or ships in this case, but there is a big challenge in front of all, us, all of us to uh, to reach audiences and to build up uh, the number number of uh, of visitors. Another example that I wanted to talk up uh, in terms of legacy are the, the the platforms that we created for involving citizens. Uh, one of those platforms is called Twenty Seven Neighborhoods. Namely, we chose neighborhoods uh, from Rijeka. Uh, from the coast, uh, from uh, our hinterland and on our islands. And as you can see in the captions, uh, the cities or the places, communities, neighborhoods that were chosen were paired with neighborhoods in European countries. Uh, so what we uh, achieved at the end is a new cultural network of non-professional groups of citizens who through culture, uh, try to solve something in uh, in uh, in their neighborhoods, in their communities. This whole project proved really, uh, really valuable uh, in COVID time because it enabled people to to continue to share, to talk about things that were meaningful for them, and also to link with partners in Europe although digitally, but I do hope that once this whole pandemic is over, that this network be, will uh, continue to grow and to cooperate physically as well. This picture is uh, each neighborhood at the end of their program provided a message for the future so that we, uh, so to say, buried or uh, this, this, this future message capsule or, and with the, with, the, with the invitation to be uh, opened in uh, in 100 years time. Uh, this is a group of young pe people who were managers of this whole program and um, the, the time capsule is buried uh, on our university capsule in uh, Rijeka. So the, these were some examples, but that also are uh, also raise a lot of questions about legacy. As I said, how the future city policy, regional policy, also national policies will help us uh, uh, ensure the legacy, but also uh, help, um, you know, as we heard in other, I, I think that in every every city, every, every, uh, every country, the, the challenges, the issues are more or less uh, the same. It's really the question of the whole ecosystem, how we will answer to that, uh, in the future. Uh, it's up to artists, institutions to be creative, to work with the audiences, but also on the other side, it's really, uh, I think we need meaningful, uh, meaningful cultural policies that really are, uh, that keep pace with, with the creativity, with digital uh, challenges, and uh, with everything that artistic uh, and cultural sectors are doing. Uh, also that support uh, culture, not just as a silence, but that support activities that transversely link uh, uh, cultural and artistic activities with other sectors that uh, 
um, helps uh, cross-sectorial, uh, cross-institutional, cross-borders uh, cooperation. I think this opening, open-mindedness and really reaching uh, out of our safe uh, spaces is something that will make us even more resilient and help us go on. Thank you, Irena, very much. You touched uh, one of the um, of the most important issues. I mean, audience development and participation in culture. Uh, Robert, if I may ask you, from the position of the um, uh, municipal policy, um, there is strategy of development of culture in Krakow. To what extent the strategy takes into consideration the uh, the um, in working on increase of number of people using and, and participating uh, uh, culture, I mean, uh, residents, not tourists coming from, from a, f for a visit, yes? Be because after a pandemic, um, this is also one of the lessons I think we, we learned uh, that uh, uh, online participation is, is, was very important. It, 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 let, it let us survive to a certain extent, um, but uh, uh, now people, uh, more people, you mentioned Boska Comedia, uh, Divine Comedy Festival, yes, so the this, this numbers were impressive, uh, 30,000 people watching uh, a theater, which is not that easy, uh, but uh, now, um, how to uh, rebuild to a certain extent again the habit and rituals of participation and not just only in this traditional way of going to theater uh, uh, but uh, you know something has changed people are used to online um, um, uh, online life they are not that uh, ready to go for any meeting, any discussion, any uh, event. Sometimes they prefer to stay at home uh, because it's more comfortable, especially if the weather is <laughs> not very nice. But, but uh, in the end, we need people. We, we, we created infrastructure. There are buildings. We need people to come back. So how, how from, from uh, uh, and, and I, I think that one of the goals of the, uh, any city should be improving quality of life of people, empowering them with, uh, um, with new skills, with uh, uh, giving them a, a space for a, a good life. And culture is of course an important part of this. Oh gosh, that's a very complex question. And, and of course, constant challenge how to uh, grow in terms of audiences. Audience development was such a, such a trend for all of the cultural strategies before, uh, prior the pandemic. And now it's even more challenging because we observe different habits. Uh, yes, change people, of model. Change. Uh, absolutely. People, they like now, that they, they like to participate in the cultural events on their own conditions mm. so they would like to choose like they choose from uh, from phone right from netflix they they would like to get access to the culture all the time and i think it's a one of the greatest discovery that we should create culture which will be uh, very easy to to access and it's a great opportunity because one of the very first film festivals in June, documentary Krakow Film Festival, was uh, watched by 80,000 people. Normally it's around 30,000. And we've got um, uh, guests even from Antarctica, <laughs> from some polar station. So it's a great opportunity to access different territories, different audiences worldwide. It's one thing. Uh, the other thing is that we observe also something like uh, outflow from, from the institutions. First of all, we can um, allow only half of the, of the total capacity, which is a big challenge. We see some of the institutions, they are, I, I would not say empty, but they need to struggle for the audiences. 
And we see also great enthusiasm of uh, being back. Yesterday, two concerts in our uh, largest uh, concert hall in Kraków, and there were two concerts organized uh, just to respond to all of the uh, uh, requests from the audiences. I think very important thing is that uh, institutions, festivals, NGOs, they were always very neighborhood oriented. Uh, we we, we developed for the last 10 years the strategy of the agglomeration of culture, bringing culture to neighborhoods, to uh, outskirts of Krakow, having libraries in all of these areas, cultural centers. So we tried to build spots and clusters for culture in all of the areas of, of Krakow, not only in the heart of the town. And that policy was very useful and is very useful, uh, especially now. Uh, but still, we need to compete now with with uh, gardens. Uh, gardening is very, very and it's popular. It's also part, part of the part of culture. culture of course, yeah, yeah. people, they, yes. they would like to leave um, towns for weekends. So we need to rethink, also redesign a little bit our cultural offer uh -huh. to do not maybe organize v v festivals, concerts like it used to be. For example, now in Krakow, the largest um, um, group of visitors in museums are inhabitants. And suddenly museums, local museums, they are opening museums longer just to be able to host uh, mm -hmm. inhabitants after with, their... With strict uh, uh, with, with restrictions, yes. And as, as a revolution, finally, we <laughs> used to ask museums, please do open your, your doors longer because I'm working till 6 p.m. and the museums are closed. And for weekends, I would like to leave to the mountains. So that's, that's another approach. And I think we need to listen to um, inhabitants also carefully because they save our culture. And that was also the discovery that our festivals, they were resilient uh, regardless of the pandemic time. Why? Because 80% of the audiences of our festivals were inhabitants. Festivals uh, focused on inhabitants, they are re resilient. Of course, we are welcome. Uh, we, w we wish we could have uh, foreigners back uh, to, to experience our rich cultural offer. But it's another discovery that uh, culture is resilient when there is a strong and, and, and very um, regular connection, permanent connection to the neighborhoods. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, our time is, a is sm slowly going to, to the end, so I will ask uh, my, my um, guests just a f for a final uh, sentence, but I want to first to um, mention four um, notions, four, four um, s criterias or, or for ideas that were mentioned by the first keynote speakers of the of the forum, uh, Sneszka Kvetchlich uh, Mihailovich, who presented uh, the Green Paper on Cultural Heritage uh, as a part of European Green Deal, at the heart of European Green Deal, and she. Um, she, she described this paper with four, four notions, uh, four values to a certain extent, and I think, and I would like you to just comment very shortly on those values. The first was togetherness, second was longer time scale, third, culture of reuse and stewardship, and fourth, embedded knowledge. And I think that uh, to, um, I like those four, um, four values very, very much because to a certain extent it's what we, what I uh, felt maybe not realize fully, what I felt what was, what is, what should be really important for the future. So being together, think on a ta longer time scale. Reuse and not not waste not waste culture, but culture of reuse, 
and embedded knowledge, so to, 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 uh, to take from the roots, yes? So please, uh, Alicia. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. I'm so happy to, to uh, comment on that. It's exactly, there is a, 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 you know, English saying, great minds think alike. I don't think I consider myself a great mind, but I'm really, uh, I'm really happy that uh, there is, uh, there are thinkers who actually from maybe more um, a kind of reflection point of view, philosophical point of view, are coming up with the same uh, ideas as us practitioners. I mean, the togetherness. Uh, as Robert mentioned, this is amazing. Uh, when you, yeah, I said at Galera that we should expand the hours to 8 p.m. just exactly because of that, just to be for Prague people more, uh, because they work until five, six, and then they would like to go somewhere. Uh, that was, you know, uh, immediately everyone understood that we have to do it for, you know, um, pandemic reasons, but also because it is the right thing to do. And also there is a you know ongoing lifestyle in Czech Republic that you you go to to the mountains to to outside of the city on the weekend. So that's exactly what happened. If this was not a pandemic, it would not be happening that uh, we actually rethink this routine of uh, saying okay, so we are open until six. That's it, and the meaning that the tourists only are coming, but not the local community. So really, that is togetherness. Uh, the long time scale, yes, the strategic thinking. Look. Everyone is actually trying to uh, get uh, more kind of base to to uh, to strategize more, uh, to be prepared for the future, be prepared for, for autumn, be prepared for next years, rethink whatever we do. That's really, really great. Reuse. We have to reuse. Other we will, if we will not reuse, we will have empty spaces. And uh, immediately the team uh, also was on, on the task. I did have a couple of brainstorming uh, last week and I'm really happy to see that suddenly that we are beginning to think that to make a shine exhibition uh, for many, many you know, uh, resources, it's, it's not the best deal. The, the most important intellectual part of it and challenges and me, you know, the messages. And embedded knowledge, yes. I mean, we have to look after our teams and make them be grow and uh, then they will look after our audiences so that's probably how i understand this keynote uh, which i couldn't do myself but I, I totally agree with thank you thank you irena yes this uh, this definitely these four words terms uh, paradigms if you want are really something that uh, um that is really um uh, you know, important uh, not just as values, but as messages and goals that we that we should uh, we should uh, reach and uh, strive forward, not just in culture, but in in every uh, area of our life. I would especially like to comment the term uh, togetherness and why. Uh, because the Croatian Pavilion on uh, uh, Venice Biennale 2020, which, which actually happened in 2021 this year because of the pandemic, uh, was entitled Togetherness Togetherless. And the pavilion was created by uh, a team from the ACA and was a direct result of uh, the ACA European Capital of Culture. And it basically gives uh, an architectural answer uh, to uh, about and uh, and comments uh, on our need uh, to to live together and to create spaces where we are in close contact, but uh, in the end we are never uh, uh, completely able to to uh, achieve that. So uh, this is a paradox of uh, of our time that uh, that we, we we live that we cannot avoid. But definitely, uh, culture, like for other issues, can at least create spaces and uh, should create spaces where we can openly uh, discuss uh, discuss this and, and other issues and uh, maybe provide, if not answers, but uh, uh, be like a lighthouse and uh, uh, artists can always point the way where to go. Thank you. Thank you, Irena. Robert. Yes, I think that being together is uh, one of the most important issues and we all uh, understood uh, how important is being connected and how, how uh, 
how work together, how cities should be together, how they can learn from each other. We, we've, uh, for example, there were a huge revival of coalition of European capital, uh, of, of culture cities uh, in the very first days of pandemia. Then the collaboration of institutions, sharing resources, space, knowledge, expertises, festivals. They were never met together before pandemia. Suddenly it was uh, possible. Uh, we were together through different international networks. They were never acting better than during the pandemic. We were in constant touch, ex exchanging uh, um, uh, everything. Then, then, of course, I mentioned Play Krakow, 80 institutions producing content, culture for on, on one platform. So it's a, such a great expression of, of uh, together, togetherness. Um, sharing uh, resources, I already uh, said a few words about that. I think that this long-term scale is like gardening. Uh, yes. <laughs> we, I was <laughs> saying that gardening is a competition for culture, and you, you notice that there is no difference. Exactly, no difference. Uh, we are all gardener working in the cultural uh, industry and working on resilience because resilience is continuous improvement uh, in the face of different of different hazard uh, events, so uh, working um, with uh, consistency, with with passion, uh, also uh, sometimes without clear result. This process is very enriching and very important. Let, let not us be the hostages of the success. Exactly. However, I think that uh, I miss in this fourth uh, values, important value, solidarity, because it's, um, it's a new sense of the solidarity, solidarity with planet, with each other, with, with uh, um, um, deprived, um, classes, social classes, with minorities, with all those people they are persecuted now mm. by different regimes. And I think that human rights is another value we should really focus on this, especially in our part of the world, because some of the basic uh, values, uh, human rights are in jeopardy in this, in this uh, extremely uh, complex um, moment. So uh, it's what I wanted to express with you uh, today, and and I believe that that this this lesson from pandemia it will be something to improve. That we would never, we won't never go back to this carousel which was running very quickly. We've even haven't seen each other sitting very close to each other. So so. Uh, I think that, that, that we need to make lesson how to keep the knowledge we've learned from this uh, this peculiar knowledge. How time. to embed this knowledge. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I, I, I have a question from, from uh, medicine because uh, Yale Medicine uh, Infections Diseases Expert um, Manisha Yutan, she said in one of the uh, interviews, humanity's memory is short and what is not ever present fades quickly. So uh, let's remember this, this, the, yeah. this experience and let's con continue in the same, same um, philosophy uh, and, and, and having those values you, you've mentioned always uh, um, at the front of our all actions. Thank you, this is a great... Uh, uh, I would say puenta, I don't know how it is in English, sorry, the, of the meeting, puenta probably. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, presence.